Welcome to Shop Talk Plus, episode six. All right, so I think Jim's pulling up. Come on. There he is. Jim, good to hey, see you, sir. Hey, what's up, man? Always a pleasure. Hey, nice what's up, you, dude? Sir. How you been? Good. Good. Busy. Same Exciting busy. stuff going on. Yeah. Exciting stuff going on. I think I said this Super last time. Busy. This is the only time we actually get to meet up is on camera. And that's actually okay. All right. Real talk, that's the honest truth. <laughs> that's the only time we get to meet up. This is the business I've seen your shop. Thank you, thank like, you. Y- 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 yeah. I came, I came here at three o'clock and there was folks outside the door. I was like, man. Yeah, it's, uh, it, we get that way sometimes, you know? We get those spurts, but uh, just back to school and still kind of quite hasn't settled down. So we're riding it out, you know, for sure. Well, like I said, when I sent you guys the calendar invite, I call this Shop Talk Plus, back to the truth because this is what we're really doing and this is what real life is, correct? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so welcome to Shop Top Plus. My name is Chris Lavario from COP Studios. And I'm Dapper Dance from Dapper Dance Barbershop. Uh, Jim Grundy, CSU Energy. All right, well, Jim, always a pleasure having you here. So today, we're gonna go kind of professional because there's a lot going on with CSU Energy and then we're gonna kind of switch it up and talk lifestyle, culture, motivation, and more. But for now, let's get right to the most important thing, not the most important thing, but in business it is, and what is that? Money, right? So, so industries are soaring, right? And tanking in this economy. We got workers going on strike, we got the White House arguing again. (laughs) Um, Interest rates sky high, it's definitely felt across the globe. So, how are the current conditions of this economy affecting you at home and in business? Man, I, I think the, the demands in our industry, uh, drivers are feeling it. They're asking for more, um, you know, office staff asking for more. Inflation uh, month over month is a real problem. So you're seeing, I, I think folks are looking at us uh, inside CSU looking for options. They want to know that there's uh, strategies in place, not the status quo. And so that's what's exciting on our side is uh, we've gathered, this is probably the best group of talent I've ever put inside four walls in our office right now, right? And so we've uh, launched a new initiative with the help of our external partnerships where they've stepped up to the plate and they've met us halfway on pricing and we're able to now provide a, uh, a completely different mode of opportunities uh, at a price that is incredibly competitive and attractive for folks outside our industry. It's a big deal. So Dapper, how are current conditions of this economy affecting you, my friend? Man, we're still feeling the effects of, of COVID. Uh, oh, COVID. It's been tough. It's a, it's a mindset from the independent contractor's point of view. People feel like that they can work from home. Uh, they can be their own boss. Um, and that's it's difficult for us small business owners to try to fill barber chairs at time. On the consumer standpoint, um, you've got families now that are cutting their hair at home. Um, Sometimes we see spurts, our sales will spike after the first, once rent's paid and all that. So it seems like people are having really to deal with priorities at the time. So um, on the independent contractor side, we're having issues and trying to fill the chairs in. And then on the consumer side, it's also been a challenge, so it's a it's it's been it's been quite strange. Yeah, strange. We are in different times. So you know, with with myself, I, I've always been one to say that marketing and branding and just put, talking about your business shouldn't be an although it is an expense, it, it shouldn't be. Oh, it comes and goes. It should be part of the uniform. So I'm gonna be honest with you. I have lost some accounts, but luckily for me, I'm always prospecting. And you know, and some, you know, I just gotta thank God that you know I'll lose two very good clients, but you. But you got some them. on the back burner. Absolutely. And then you close the deals on those, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so exactly. you know, later on, I'm gonna have some questions that are gonna kind of dive into that. So now, Jim, thanks for having me the other day. We had a discussion. You and the team. There's so much going on right now. And before we even had that meeting, you told me South Texas was out of control. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about. South Texas. South Texas. Wow. I mean, let's go back to December of last year. We, we all met up in here and we were talking about our projections for 2023. And, and we felt at the time we were going to put up $50 million in revenue this year, right? 
Um, the reality is one, one thing we didn't account for was, was, was interest rates were going to have that big of a, um, we're, we're going to be that detrimental to, I think, consumerism and what's going on around us. The dollar, your dollar today in 2021 is worth about 20% less today. Uh, raises, ain't nobody getting a 20% raise in two years. It's not happening. Very true, very true. So in 2021, you know, if you had one X, you're now looking at 0.8 X with the same, with much less uh, buying power and the cost of goods of everything has gone up. The cool thing about what you just said is like, hey, we, we lost some customers. We lost business. We didn't lose it though. It's the market contracted. What that allowed us to do though was take a step back and look at the equation of how we're leveraged in certain categories. We, we doubled down, brought in new talent, and now we're launching, we just launched uh, a whole separate division um, that's gonna bring a, an extra 30, 40 million dollars revenue. To a us. whole separate division. A whole separate division. Can you elaborate on that? At this yeah, time? yeah, okay. absolutely. Uh, what we do is pneumatic delivery. Pneumatic delivery is using a PTO or a blower to blow off product, bulk commodities such as fly ash, sand, bentonite, bayrite, salt, whatever. We, we've been approached numerous times to get into the bottom drop world. Uh, bottom drop is letting gravity, you're dumping product out of a trailer, opening hatches from the bottom and it just falls out on a conveyor belt and it goes up to a silo. We've been real hesitant to enter that market because it's, it's fairly new. Um, there's a lot of different types of bottom drop depending on which customer you go to. So we've kind of been waiting for a customer to meet us halfway on a commitment that we can really delve into operationally and find a solution. We didn't just find one customer, we found three. So we're, we've launched that in West Texas um, and our projections by this time, that division alone will have two to 300 trucks in it this time next year. Impressive. So Congrats, you know, Jim. Yeah, yeah, it's a big deal. We're, we're gonna help a lot of people out there that aren't in the oil industry because this division doesn't require experience. Folks can come that own their own truck, owner operators can jump into this division. They don't need experience. We're providing trailers, we're providing free training, no escrow, no down payment. Then you assist with the outfitting of that truck? Everything they need. Oh, that's amazing. And the only way we're allowed to do that is because our external customers met us halfway on there, right? They, they gave us the runway uh, to allow us to invest in some things. Um, and, and it's gonna provide diversity, opportunity, um, and it goes back to that responsibility we talked about a few episodes ago. We, have an, we, we do have a responsibility to each other and to the people that we support to continually uh, lifting up rocks and finding opportunities out there. And I think we've done that. And what I like about this show is each one of us has a journey to where, you know, we are seeing some, the fruits of our labor. I'm not saying we're in the best position, but what I'm trying to get at is, Jim, I've known this guy, you deserve it, okay? I don't, I don't I, I'm, I'm not one to just hand out Oh, you, that you deserve it because we don't. I don't deserve it, but you deserve it, and you deserve it. And get, this next topic is, is is gonna show you what I mean. So, there's no secret. You know, automotive plants are on strike, right? These guys are asking for 40% raises, four-day work weeks. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna say. I get it, but here's here's what I don't get. I'm watching. I don't even know if it was a CNN or Fox. This lady said, I finally, you know, had the balls to come out here and, and be on strike. So she held the picket sign, and then the next day, she's getting in line for her strike pay. I'm like, what kind of world do we live in? I, I want more wages, but then I'm the first one to get in that line for my $100 a day strike pay. It's tough. That's the world we live in. It's tough. So, so you know, I'm gonna start with you, Jim. What they're asking for, to me, it's dangerous. What do you think? The interesting thing about the union strikes, uh, the UAW especially, they, they negotiated a decrease during COVID and they all agreed to it to keep the doors open. Now you see the average cost of a finance car up over $700 a month. The car companies are making more money today than they ever have in the history of any car, uh, of any car manufacturer ever. Uh, the average cost uh, of vehicles in the last 10 years has risen 100%. So I think a lot of people are looking at that saying, wait a minute, we're, we're outputting more vehicles. 
uh, in the U.S., people are spending more money on vehicles. My wage is the same as it was during COVID when we took a pay decrease. And so they're trying to claw some of that back, but you're, you're dealing with a union and here in Texas, we're anti-union, right? Um, it's a lot of bureaucracy, um, a lot of red tape. They got to cut through on that. I mean, I wish them the best, but if that doesn't work out, we got spots for Sisu. They can come down here and be non. <laughs> they can be non-union folks and make more money, more money than making now. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because how do we fix the problem? You know. So Dapper, you're a business owner. What kind of, you know, you you have barbers, separate barbers and separate chairs. What kind of challenges have you faced over the years of just, hey man, you're doing good. You're opening up three shops. I'm not saying they're coming to you with open arms, but what kind of challenges can you highlight? I think the challenges that I deal with um, that are pretty common are my barbers want to get paid more. And how do you give and take when uh, they're, they're commission based, they're an independent contractor, right? And, and, and that's difficult. They're not, they're, their pay is based if someone's in that chair. So right now, Daniel is hired at the moment because he's got someone in the chair. If there's not a body in that chair, he's not getting paid. So on, on my end, it's a little bit more, uh, it, it's, it's, it's different in a sense because they're not hourly. And what I find um, when my barbers are coming to me and they're wanting to raise or they're wanting more money, uh, it depends on them actually. And what I can do as a business owner, and I don't do all the time, Chris or Jim, is there's times where I have to go up on my rates, you know, and I have to stay competitive with the competitors. And, and I do my very best to never price gouge, but there's times where, you know, it's, we do have to go up on our rates. And that's the only way that I find myself compensating for that, you know? I don't mean to sound insensitive when I say it's dangerous, but in my world, okay, I, you know, I own a company, but I really own a job. And, and my, the, the job that I own is, is blessed to have clients like, uh, the gentleman I met this morning. I, I, had two, I visited with two great clients this morning, nice. and then I got Jim here today. You know, my world is rocking and rolling, but I often say my rates, how I price, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but I, I, I truly believe I'm 10 times faster than the normal guy. Okay. We show up to a meeting the other day. I said, when do you, when do you need the spot? What was your answer? Tonight. 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 Okay, okay. So at 3 a.m., it's dropped in his inbox. That effort, for me, is, is, is all I got. So now, am I really 10 times faster? I can sit here and say that it sounds cool, but I deliver at a rate that's crazy. So it's dangerous for me when, when, when I get people that work for me approach me, I'm like, dude, you, ain't even you can't even deliver one thing and I'm delivering 30 to 150 a week without even questioning. So I don't mean to sound insensitive to the union worker. Why I say it's dangerous is there's people all over this world that are dying to work for some of these wages that people don't think it's enough. So that's where I get the word dangerous from. And I just, I just don't wanna see a world where the jobs aren't kept in America, you know, and that, that, that gets into politics. But I agree, hey, I, wanna, I wanna add to that. And the reason why I believe Chris is so quick is because this man doesn't sleep. <laughs> Let people know, how many hours do you sleep in a night? Well, it, it's give and take. I went to sleep at four in the morning last night. I'm up at six. So you slept two um, hours last night? I slept two hours. But, but, my, but my, those two hour naps, you know, but I, so you, I always- You power my, nap. <laughs> I power nap. You know, Jim wow. actually pulled up at 3.30 because we had miscommunication. And I'm like, and I roll up at a- Jim. I, I roll up like, like a hobo <laughs> out of the transit. You know what I'm saying? How many hours of sleep do you get, Jim? Uh, man, self, self care. I'm, I've been focusing on that a lot. Uh, I, I, I'm right at eight hours. You're right at eight, eight every yeah. night. I'm dot. I'm, I'm deprived right now, but it's coming. But you're in the baby days. I'm in the too. baby. You got, yeah, yeah. You got a baby. I mean, yeah. that's, that's broken up. You're chopping two, three hours at a time. It's, it's nuts. It's, rough. it's nuts, but he'll be a year before you know it. And, uh, yeah. I'll be getting that nice Mexican sleep that I deserve. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but don't think Dapper that I wouldn't be sleeping if I could. Right, so had I, if I can have the help, yeah, I'm gonna sleep. But you know, luckily for me, my wife is also in the business with me. She is. And so we got two bosses it's, rocking and rolling. It's just because I know you personally, and I just know you're a grinder, man. You're a go-getter. It's just your personality. It's who you are. 
and it's why you're where you're at. And I have people all day long telling me, man, you, you got to take care of yourself, Chris. I'm like, I've been doing this since I was 14 years old, yeah. right? Now, what, what I do want is when I retire from this, I want my filmmaking career to start. So, you know what I'm saying? So that, that's my give and take. Yes. So let's move on. This ain't about me. This is about great opportunity yes. and flourishment. Mm -hmm. TCU Energy has some huge opportunities. You know, I wanted today just to, you know, get back to the booth, back to the truth, right? So that's gonna be the end of session one. We, we, we talked about some cool things. And like I said, we're here, we're here to shoot a couple episodes and dive into some more topics. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign us out unless anybody else has anything else to say. No, I appreciate the opportunity. No, I appreciate it. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, so signing out episode number five or six, who knows, right? Cause I don't sleep, right? Yeah, you're Chris right. Chris with COP Studios. Dapper Dan with Dapper Dan's Barbershop. Jim Grundy, c Energy. All right, peace. Let's get to episode two, right? Let's go. Let's do it. Thank you.